Bert, the question that has dominated my life has been the nature of consciousness. Is it material? Is there something mental or spiritual? W what is the essence of, of consciousness? Now, the people who are involved with artificial intelligence, uh, looking at the tremendous growth, uh, exponential growth of computer power, would say that once you have sufficient number of processes with improved software that represents the real world, etc., you will be able to wholly duplicate, wholly duplicate human consciousness on a machine and, in fact, in a few years, do it very cheaply. You have pioneered a way of thinking about computers that may be a little bit different. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. It seems to me that you have to trace sort of the history of AI for a moment. Artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence to see where this peculiar new, this relatively new view that if you could duplicate all of the connections, you would get what the brain obviously gets, in, 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 in consciousness. But let's run through, I mean, the, the, I think AI has failed, and it's failed in a way that seems to me sort of not going to get, isn't even pointing in the direction of your getting intelligent behavior, let alone consciousness. To begin with, when I came to MIT, and I taught at MIT for eight years, the AI people were uh, the, doing their artificial intelligence thing nearby, and they had been doing it for a while. They came into my class and said, well, if you philosophers have had the 2,000 years and you can't understand consciousness, uh, intelligence, language, learning, any of that, and we're beginning to understand it over here in the AI labs. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow. If that's so, I better find out. Well, my brother happened to be hired at the Rand Corporation, and just by amazing coincidence, the guy who hired my brother said that his brother had written him saying, you got to know Merleau Ponty before you know whether you wanted the Rand Corporation should get involved in this artificial intelligence business. Uh -huh. So they hired me as a consultant, uh -huh. and that was in 65. Simon Newell, the big beginners of AI, were at RAND, and we had a kind of tense relationship. And I wrote a paper called Alchemy and Artificial Intelligence, which was to say that w the way they were trying to achieve intelligence with computers couldn't be done. And it was sort of interesting how, we, how I knew it couldn't be done, and they didn't know it couldn't be done, mm -hmm. is that philosophers had developed a lot of very sophisticated ways of thinking about the mind. Namely, that there must be elementary bits of knowledge, sort of primitive something or others, that the concepts were rules, that uh, we had representations in our minds of the world, and we made inferences from those representations of the world, and that's how we came to behave intelligently mm -hmm. and understand things. Now, there wasn't any particular place in that for consciousness, but they didn't care. They were trying to make computers at that point that just could behave in, be, behave intelligently and the and what was interesting was that whereas they came to my class and said you know you philosophers have wasted your time for 2,000 years mm -hmm. once I saw what they were writing reading Newell and Simon at Rand I discovered they had inherited the whole philosophical story the philosophers like Descartes believed in atomic ideas and Hume and so forth Kant said the concepts were rules Husserl said that concepts were formal rules and hierarchies of rules, all sounding very AI-like. Mm -hmm. Every one of these people since Descartes believed that we had internal mental representations of the world. And they bought all that, and they turned it into a research program. At the very same time, it was about 1957, that Wittgenstein published The Logical Investigations, where he was un destroying that whole view, which was his own previous view, mm -hmm. in something called the Tractatus. And Heidegger had already destroyed the whole Cartesian thing in 1927 in Being in Time. And since I was teaching those guys, I knew that the AI people had inherited a lemon. They had <laughs> taken over in their research program a 2,000-year failure. And so I just said, OK, you guys are just behind the times. You're going to discover that this doesn't work. And they finally did. Minsky, who was head of the AI lab then, and said all we needed was a few million more facts in the computer, and then it would behave intelligently to have common sense knowledge, has now said in an interview in Wired that uh, uh, AI has been brain dead since the early 70s when 
uh, they discovered the common sense knowledge problem. And that's what I talked about in my book, What Computers Can't Do. There were two problems. The common sense knowledge problem, where is all this knowledge of the world stored? And I said, well, if Heidegger's right, it's not stored in the mind. It's stored out there in the world. And the proof is that you've got something called the frame problem, you guys, that you are sort of repressing, which is if something changes, like, say, I get up and walk over there, how much in my representation of the situation in the computer has to change? Well, my shadow <laughs> has to go with me, and my feet go with me, but most of the stuff over there doesn't go at all, doesn't change. But they couldn't deal with that. And the only way to deal with it would have been to see what Heidegger saw, that the best model of the world is the world itself. You have to be in the world. Yeah, you have to be in the world, and your knowledge shows up in the familiarity of things. And when you learn something new about the world, things look different. And you learn what looks like it changes when something else changes by looking. And now, and, and what happened was the AI people doing what's called symbolic information processing, which, which is the philosophical approach to the mind, failed. And now the head of the AI lab, uh, it, well, just recently, Rodney Brooks, he's not, he's gone off to make robots now. But anyway, sa says, said that the best representation of the world is the world itself. That was the slogan at the AI labs. It was about the same time that they began to realize they were in trouble and invited me to come to the AI labs. They'd never let me set foot there. <laughs> and I gave them a lecture on why you have to understand Heidegger if you're going to do AI. Right. And all this converged into something which is now called Heideggerian AI, <laughs> which is, uh, and that's fine, except there's a new problem. Rodney Brooks makes robots, and they keep track of the world by keeping, um, their sensors tell, us, tell it what's changing. Mm -hmm. However, they can't learn anything. They're, just, they're insects, and he knows that. He calls them animats. But the, we, we don't learn new facts about the world. We, the, we learn the world keeps changing the way it looks for us as we, when we discover in a, new, in a city more and more about the city, the physiognomy of the city changes, Merleau-Ponty says. It looks like that's the way to mm -hmm. the Seine, and that's the way to the <laughs> Arc de Triomphe, and so <laughs> forth. And you just follow how it looks. So now, what's going to help them? to get the missing thing, which is learning, or even more missing thing, which is consciousness. All this has been done on the behaviorist level, we'll just get it to yeah. behave like people. And it fails to behave like people, and darn well must fail to be conscious. <laughs> Everybody agrees to that. Yeah. So what would it take? Well, one th the latest idea, which I, sounds to me like sheer madness and desperation, is to say, well, we get computer chips get more and more and more powerful, and once they get powerful enough, so that there are as many bits on them as there are stored in the brain, then we'll be able to do this. Uh, for one thing, that's been an old story. As AI was failing and going down and down, the computer chips were getting cheaper and faster and more condensed. And they kept saying, well, uh, we're having trouble now, but the next generation of computer chips is going to save us. And it never saved them. They just kept getting worse, and the computer chips getting, kept getting better. <laughs> And just as a sane person extrapolating, I would say, why shouldn't we believe that that's going to go on even across some line where we get billions of bits? Uh, well, I mean, you're not going to get billions. You're going to get 10 to the 20th bits. And you can calculate, and some people do. It's hard to do. But the number of, of, of bits that are processed every second through, you know, 100 billion neurons, each one with 100,000 connections. I mean, take some maximal numbers. You can get some very large numbers. But at some point... It looks like in this millennium, some people would say with, you know, halfway through this century, and that may be optimistic, but mm. whatever, at some point you're really going to have this kind of processing power. Yeah. And now the funny question is, and now, now these are difficult questions, but uh, there's a kind of contradiction in this. Surely if a computer did it, it would do it just the way you said, with billions of computations right. very fast. Right. That can't be the way the brain does it, of course, because the brain does it, as, as you know, being a brain studier, <laughs> very slowly. Yeah. And the fact that we've got, uh, what is the latest news, 20, uh, 10 to the 20 uh, neurons, billions and billions of neurons, yeah. with an average of 10,000 connections on each, right, right. somehow... Like 100 billion or something. Okay, is that it? Yeah. So, 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 the, it can't be that just by having all that bits in there, it's doing us any good at all because we're crunching along it. You can tell me, I don't know how many, how many milliseconds it takes to right. move a bit around. Yeah. But if it's not that, then what is it? 
nobody has any idea <laughs> and they should just keep quiet until they do because I mean I think it is the hardest question how in the world matter which is this third person material stuff could ever produce consciousness and AI and, uh, and the use of computers is not helping us understand it one bit.